It wasn't until the arrival of the railroad that the South Park was really connected to the outside world. The railroad provided a method for the miners to ship their ore for processing, and the ranchers could ship the cattle they raised to markets hundreds of miles away. The railroads really fostered or enabled the development of the South Park area. People moving, freight coming in and out, supplies coming in and out, ore going back down to Denver to be processed, uh, and it really speeded up development. Uh, initially, the Denver South Park and Pacific was uh, narrow gauge. And one of the reasons that they built in, in narrow gauge was because of the economy of it. Uh, the engines and the trains and the track were all smaller and lighter, they were cheaper to buy, and actually more conducive to steep grades and tight turns in the mountains. The challenge was uh, keeping the train on the tracks, not losing it going downhill. Uh, the grades are steep, generally they were limited to 4%, which in modern railroads, one and a half percent is a steep grade. It really limited how much you could pull up a hill. And going downhill, there's always the, the danger of a runaway, and that's just multiplied by ice and snow on the rails. They came up with this uh, wonderful piece of machinery called the Leslie Rotary, and it was just a big circular wheel with a lot of blades on it that would throw snow. It had a steam engine boiler behind the wheel just to drive the wheel. The thing actually wasn't propelled by itself. It took several engines to push this thing. And it did a wonderful job. Uh, took the place literally of hundreds of men. And then we've seen many pictures of lots and lots of people with shovels. And it, it's amazing. Sometimes they're clearing 20 foot deep snow. Basically they stopped wherever the towns were because there's always people and materials that need to come and go. And occasionally out in the middle of nowhere, so basically the railroad just said, what's the need? And, and that's where we'll stop. They came the gold miners, then the train came. The Italians had named this Como. And that's how it began. There were trains going um, at least 10 per day, especially in the prime time from about 1890 to 1910. 10 trains a day at least, but sometimes up to 26 trains. Each train had its own separate whistle that um, the engineers could tweak, so when they were coming into town, their family knew that they were coming in. Tourism, which had been around since the late 1860s, grew into a new industry as people from Denver came on the train to experience the wildflowers and cool air of South Park. The railroad promoted heavily uh, the sites and whatnot. The South Park also ran along the Platte River, and they emphasized fishing. Como was a bustling little town when the train was here. I understand people used to come on vacation. They'd take the train. Um, they enjoyed the wildflowers of South Park. A little rambunctious, this little town, full of saloons, brothels. Apparently there was a... The revenuers would come up from the city on the train, and they had a whistle because the church camp, and even at the roundhouse they had moonshine going and they would blow a certain whistle to warn everyone in Como to hide the shine. The revenuers were on the train. So this gives you an idea of what kind of town it was. Well this building is very much a work in progress. The room we're in at the moment is the waiting room and uh, when the building was built originally in 1879 we're fairly sure that the station agent had his office over here behind me. We have a photograph from 1883 that we can date pretty clearly and it shows the building as it is now. When the roundhouse was built, when they started building over Boreas Pass to Leadville, that's when Coma became a, an important railroad town. Uh, it was the biggest railroad facility outside of uh, Denver. So they built this roundhouse here of stone, uh, basically a, a garage for locomotives to be serviced. The length of time a locomotive would spend in one of the bays depended on what it needed. Typically a locomotive would come in at the end of the day and they'd put it in the barn at night and basically just clean it up, keep the fire going, oil it all around, get it lubricated up and get it ready for the next day's uh, work. They'd keep a fire in it all night so it wouldn't go cold and they'd have to start the fire from scratch. Bring it out the next day and would go to work. Whatever the locomotive needed they would do and the bigger jobs could take several weeks before they were finished. This is the turntable itself, and the way it worked is it pivoted in the middle, and there was a rail that went around these stone blocks, and they would spike this rail. It's a guide rail 
on the perimeter of the pit. So most of the weight was on the pivot point in the middle, but also there was a wheel on each end, and there was what they called a Johnson bar. And it came out here about eight or 10 feet, and it was a big, like an oak beam. And they would just lean into it, and they'd be able to push this thing around. Most of the weight was on the bearing in the middle. And two guys, four would be a luxury, but one guy in each end could easily push this thing around. So they would spin it around to line it up with one of the, the tracks into the roundhouse. Again, lock it in place once they got it aligned, and then the locomotive would release its brake and steam into the roundhouse. The Pacific Hotel was the hotel division of the Union Pacific, and this was the only narrow gauge hotel that they had. Now, when this building was built, there were 20 trains a day coming past here and the platform extended 20 feet at its, at its most from the track. So it would have been quite a noisy building, and I'm sure it vibrated a bit as the trains rumbled past. In 1937, the railroad service ended in Park County. In addition, gas rationing during World War II kept a lot of people home. Towns like Como became ghost towns. Well, they pulled the train tracks, apparently, the trains were owned by one big conglomerate group, very political. South Park Loop that came through here was not holding its own. It wasn't making enough money, so they discontinued it. When they discontinued it, they took the tracks with them. And in 1938, we were a ghost town.